Thank you, Dr. Eridol, for talking to on search today about fibroadenoma. How does fibroadenoma usually present? That is, are, do patients get sent to you with a palpable mass, an imaging finding, or after a biopsy? Yeah, so, uh, you know, oftentimes at a tertiary center, the patients have already had a biopsy when I see them, but not always. Um, fibroadenoma tends to present in younger women, so before age 40, we usually see a drop off after age 40, which means that the majority of the fibroadenomas are found as a palpable lump. Although again, they can be found on screening mammogram or on imaging that's done for some other reason. Um, you know, maybe a, a high risk a patient with a family history is starting the screening imaging at an earlier age. Mm -hmm. And how do you manage it when, once you know that it's a fibroadenoma? Yeah, so once we uh, see a mass, you know, we review. So anytime I see the patient, I review the imaging, any biopsies that have been done. And the first is really to establish the diagnosis. Um, you know, the fibroadenomas on ultrasound typically look pretty b benign. They're ovoid masses. But I always want to look and see, was the radiologist suspicious? You know, did they think that this looked like a clear fibroadenoma? Was it uniformly hypoechoic? Or did it have some, you know, heterogeneity or maybe some uh, irregular borders that made them a little more suspicious? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we really work uh, together closely with breast imaging and pathology uh, in breast surgery. And so, you know, the second question then is, if it's had a biopsy, you know, is the pathologist convinced that this is a fibroadenoma or do they have any doubts? Some of the reasons they might have doubts is uh, increased cellularity of the stroma, especially in an older woman. And again, here we're not talking typically very uh, elderly women. We're talking, you know, a woman who's 35 or 40, you know, and has more cellularity in the stroma, the pathologist might say, looks like a fibroadenoma, but I don't expect this much cellularity at this age. Mm -hmm. Now, based on imaging alone, um, if you f have strong enough suspicion that it's just a fibroadenoma, um, how do you follow that up or what do you do uh, if it's a small one? Yeah, so if it's small, let's say it's a centimeter or less, you know, especially in a um, young woman, 21-year-old woman, and the uh, radiologist is not concerned, then we would follow it both on physical exam and on imaging. So we would see these women back every three to six months. Three to six months. Uh, yeah, and then after you know two years or so, if it's stable, we don't necessarily need to see them so often. You know, and, and a little bit of the follow-up depends on um, the individual as well. You know, is this an easily palpable thing where she can tell me, you know, three years from diagnosis if it's changing all of a sudden, um, and then we would definitely see her back. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, is it a good number of them that be become stable and just watchable over time? Yeah, especially younger women, you know, so um, the, the literature reports say that women, uh, you know, around the age of 20, these can even involute and go away, mm -hmm. you know, so they may disappear if they, they uh, come on early. Um, but not all of them do. And sometimes they increase in size, you know, and, and so they may end up going on to excision, even if initially we thought we could watch them. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the uh, indication for excision versus just a biopsy of one? Yeah, so typically I like to biopsy anything um, with a core needle prior to excision um, because it might be a, a different finding and that would change our management. So, you know, if we're worried about something, we would do a, a biopsy first. And then if it showed that it was a fibroadenoma, the reasons that we might excise it would be larger size. There's probably inconsistent guidance out there, but you know, more than two and a half to three centimeters, if it's a new fibroadenoma, most people would recommend excision. Mm -hmm. And then again, some of those concerning pathologic or imaging features. So if the radiologist is concerned about it and you know, we don't believe that the biopsy of fibroadenoma, if it's discordant, then we would certainly excise it. And then if the pathology shows, again, increased uh, stromal cellularity or mitotic figures, and they sort of, you know, uh, can't say for sure that it's fibroadenoma, then we would excise it to get a tissue diagnosis, sure. make sure that it's not a phylloides tumor. Okay. Let's say you had one that um, you excised, a small one you excised, and it is, um, or let's just say you biopsied it, and it is just a fibroadenoma, and pretty convincingly. Um, 
Well, how do you counsel patients on the natural history or the relationship of fibroadenoma to malignancy or their Sure. Fear? So, yeah, what do I tell a woman to expect? Because again, uh, we see a lot of women with benign breast disease, but in the back of everyone's mind is, what if I have breast cancer? Maybe I should just get this lump out to make sure it's not breast cancer. Um, so, you know, I would tell a woman with fibroadenoma, similar to a lot of other benign breast diseases, that she's at a somewhat increased risk for breast cancer compared to a woman who has no benign breast disease. Also, it's a good opportunity to risk stratify the patient, so to talk to them about family history and kind of identify if there are other uh, factors. Maybe on the biopsy there was something in addition to the fibroadenoma. Uh, some atypia or, you know, LCIS or something like that. And so really, you know, that's the first step is how uh, likely is this woman to develop cancer in the future? But the fibroadenoma itself is unlikely to um, turn into a, a conventional breast cancer. And it's also unlikely to harbor a malignancy. So, um, you know, this has been looked at in, in the literature, probably less than 2% of fibroadenomas will have carcinoma within them. That's including in situ carcinoma. Um, so, you know, it's unlikely to contain a malignancy. It doesn't typically turn into conventional breast cancer. Um, and so, you know, we just need to know that that woman is a little bit higher than average risk for breast cancer in the future. Okay. Uh, again, and then I would tell her, you know, this is our plan for watching the fibroadenoma. You know, so that if anything changes that makes us worry, then we would go on to excise it. Sure, sure. Okay, final thoughts on fibroadenoma. Yeah, I would say this is a pretty common lesion. Uh, you know, in most women, uh, we either find one and excise it or, you know, watch it and don't have to do anything. Um, but it's something where seeing a breast specialist, especially in an unusual case, might be important. So there are women who will have multiple fibroadenomas. Um, or there are young women, adolescents, who will have giant fibroadenomas that might interfere with breast development. So, you know, that's the other piece is, you know, there's sort of fibroadenoma and then there's fibroadenoma, making sure that we, you know, know what to do with the more complicated cases. Okay, great. Thanks again, Dr. Erdahl, for talking to OnSearch. Thank you. Thanks for checking out the Op Report. Help us keep conversations alive on topics in general surgery. Check out more episodes of The Op Report and other OnSearch content here at YouTube. Find us at Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. And find our homepage at OnSurge.com. Join the conversation and tell us what topics you'd like to hear about and what people you'd like to hear from.